All right. That always makes me so nervous when it doesn't go the way you, you plan it to go. All right, so let's talk about what's going to make you more secure. So I've shown you productivity improvements, but let's talk about security improvements. Uh, so we have this new auto HTML encoding syntax. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, in my views, I didn't have less than percent equal. I had less than percent colon. And you might be wondering, well, what the heck is that? Uh, so this is a new feature that's part of ASP.NET 4, not specific to MVC2. Uh, so if you're running MVC2 on ASP.NET 4, so consider the fact that we support uh, MVC2 on 3.5 SP1 and .NET 4. If you're running on .NET 4, you get this new syntax that does HTML.encode by default. So uh, what we like to say is that it's kind of like less than percent equal, but the equals rotated so it points directly at you. So that's a good way to remember it. And, uh, but the nice thing about our syntax is, uh, is that you can return a type that indicates uh, to the framework that you don't want the re return type to be encoded. So let me show you this real quick. Oh, wrong, once again. Okay. So let's look at the edit screen again. You notice here I'm using this less than percent colon for HTML.editor for model. Let's also use this for H, uh, just some script tag. You've been owned. Sorry. Pwned. Actually, that should be an alert, right? <laughs> and now let's go back to the, uh, oops. Uh, oh, yeah, got to end it with the double quotes. So you notice here that when I, it HTML encoded that, right? So that's great. So anytime you're printing out variables, especially values that come from the user, uh, use less than percent colon. In fact, we'd like it, like it to be the case where you forget about less than percent equal. So less than percent equal, it never existed. From now on, when you're doing .NET develop, ASP.NET development and you need to print out a value directly, use it less than percent colon. Now, one of the interesting things is you notice here that I'm using less than percent colon for this call to editor model, but none of this, but this HTML is being rendered. It's not being encoded. Why is that the case? Well, if you have a type that, uh, we added this new interface called IHTML string in .NET 4, and we also have a concrete type called HTML string in .NET 4. So if your method returns a type that implements that interface, uh, and the HTML string is for convenience, then we will not encode that with the syntax. So that gives you the power as the library developer or the application developer to, uh, to indicate that, you know what, this method is supposed to return HTML. I don't want it double coded. I'll, I'll take uh, uh, ownership of the fact that it's safe. And so this is a nice feature that now we can say that uh, by default, you know, ASP.NET does HTML encoding by default, which is redundant. All right. So JSON result is secure by default. So uh, one of the changes we made in MVC2, and uh, you know, this is something you should really be aware of because it, uh, I've heard from several people it kind of bit them when they were upgrading, is that uh, we, do, we do not send JSON, uh, if you just call return JSON of some object, we don't return it in response to get requests. We'll throw an exception. Uh, and you can override that by passing in an extra parameter uh, to allow gets, but by default we require a post. Uh, if you come to uh, my talk with Scott Hanselman at 1.30, we'll show you a demonstration of an attack that, makes, that shows you why we made this change. And what's interesting is uh, uh, the guy who invented uh, JSON is actually here at this conference. I believe he's give, Douglas Crockford is giving a talk at 3, and I don't know if it's been updated on the schedules yet, so uh, keep a lookout for that. And we also made an, uh, a small improvement to the uh, anti-forgery or cross-site request forgery uh, helpers that we include. Uh, I'll also be sh we'll show a demo of uh, what cross-site request forgery is later today. So this provides, uh, uh, the, the change we made was that we provide better protection for sites that are on the same domain. So if you happen to have evil.example.com and good.example.com, uh, we protect the two from each other better with uh, the new helpers. All right, so what, what's going to make your application a speed demon? So 
uh, one of the new features we add is the async controller. So this allows you to call into some external service, uh, whether it's a web service or uh, you know, some kind of uh, other service running in another process uh, in a non-blocking manner. So if you were to call that uh, ser web service in a controller action directly, uh, the thread would be waiting for the response and not in use. With async controller, you can make it so that uh, that thread goes back to the thread pool, starts handling other requests, and then when the response comes back, uh, it lights up again and, and, and continues. And we based our uh, implementation on uh, what's called the async event pattern. So you have an action name. Your action method is uh, split into two, the action name async and the action name completed. And so the async sets up the asynchronous call, and the completed gets called when the uh, async operations are done. And we also did a, a massive amount of performance tuning through the framework. We do a lot of, uh, especially with the expression-based helper, since a lot of those are, would normally use reflection, uh, we try to avoid using f reflection and instead use uh, techniques like lightweight code generation or, uh, 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 or caching. So what's going to make you more happy as a developer? So uh, hopefully areas is one of those features that uh, uh, is designed to help you deal with really large lists of controllers so that uh, if, you, if you have this huge list of controllers, it can get real frustrating because you're always, uh, you can't figure out what, where, you can't find the control you want to edit. So areas allows you to keep your project well organized. And I think, uh, you know, I, I don't know about you, but for me, a well organized project makes me happy. And we also added a, a, a dialog for setting up areas called the add area dialog which I'll show soon. And we also added render action. So render action uh, allows you to uh, call an action method from a view. Uh, so this is very useful for things like uh, I have a widget that needs to be on every page. Maybe it's a weather thing. And I want to call it, uh, like I don't want to have to set up the, the data for it in every single action method. I just want the view to render that thing uh, in place. So I'll show you. A, Oh, and uh, we also added an empty project template. So this just, by popular demand, we, our default project template has a lot of functionality in it. A lot of people told us, we want an empty project template, so we added one. So my next demo is uh, areas and render action. This will be a quick one. So let's say on, I'm continuing to work on Hack Overflow, and I want to add uh, a forum, or not a forum, they, uh, a blog section to it. I just want people to be able to, to uh, post their blog post to it. So I can uh, right click on the project and I have this add area dialog and I can give it an area name. Now what's happened there is that uh, we've added this new areas folder. So the dialog noticed that, oh, you don't have an areas folder yet, so we're going to set up the conventions that make areas work in MVC2. So it added this areas, added this blogs folder. So if I wanted to add a new area, uh, for example, called games, I could do that. And now we have this games uh, uh, area as well. And we also have this games area registration.cs class that we added. So what this does is this is the code to register the routes specific to your area. You can see here I have this default route uh, slash games. The other thing to note, if you're wondering how that all gets hooked up, is we, in the default template, we have this call, area registration dot register all areas. So if you're upgrading an MVC1 app manually, uh, you'll need, and you're adding areas, you'll need to remember to make sure to include this uh, call into global ASX CS. 